So welcome everyone. My name is Taurus the Legend. Thank you so much for joining us on our episode five of our SAP uh, Garage series, our ongoing series. Today we will be bringing you establish a central inbox with SAP Task Center and our guest speaker is Fabian Lehman, a product expert, SAP BTP. Um, we have a great uh, agenda lined up for you today. Um, he will be covering, like I said, establish a central inbox with SAP Task Center. Before we get started, I just want to make you, let you guys know of some of the upcoming uh, events that we have in our ongoing SAP BTP customer value uh, network events. On uh, June the 7th, if you want to join us, um, achieve, achieve hyper automation in your business. We'll be holding that in both main time zones. On June the 8th, we have a session, uh, Grow Your Business Rapidly with SAP Business Bridge. And that is uh, mainly for the Americas time zone. Uh, and I believe those in Europe can join, but it'll be a little later in your day. On June the 14th, we'll be covering how to create the intelligent procurement process with SAP process automation. And that's with our uh, partner, Convergent IS. And we'll be running that again in the two main time zones. On June the 22nd, we have a session, uh, how to streamline your transformation with custom code migration and analysis tools on SAP BTP uh, with RISE. And then finally, uh, in June, uh, how to integrate SAP process automation with procurement. And that's uh, focused again um, on mainly uh, the uh, Americas and, and APJ. Um, for those of you who are find themselves in Orlando at, uh, at Sapphire, and if you're there on May the 9th, the day before Sapphire starts, uh, please do join us uh, for an on-site uh, networking event creating the intelligent enterprise for retail with SAP BTP. And that is a, an evening a, a dinner um, it, with uh, focusing on retail. And that's in uh, collaboration with our partner, uh, Fujitsu. Um, as I said, our speaker today is uh, Fabian Lehman. I'll now hand it over to Fabian to take over. Fabian? No, yeah, sure. Okay, uh, let's let briefly also share my screen and have a look first of all of some slides. So you should see, oh no, not yet. Wait a second. No, you should yes. see something. Yeah, I can okay. see your, your slide. Okay, maybe maybe a few words to my type person. Yeah, right. I'm a product uh, expert, product manager, whatever in the in the area of uh, <coughs> GNI for across architecture and tel intelligent enterprise. And and yeah, I want to cover currently or today the sub task center mission and also the suite quality with the name one workflow inbox because two products or solutions are yeah, the same, which we see later on. And uh, yeah, disclaimer shortly because this is some new features as well. We want to cover the following topics, I guess. Yeah, so we want to have a look on the high level idea of our integration strategy at SAP. And then we are heavily in practical part. Yeah, we walk through to some additional slides, but not, not too much. Yeah. And then we have really in the hands on to set up sub task center on BTP and what you need to do here, I would show you. And also we have a look on the discovery center mission for sure. And then yeah, and, and the end, we have some time for Q and A and additional questions if required. Yeah. Okay. Let's get started, maybe, yeah. Some of you know this picture, I guess, yeah. In the past, we have burger, now we have, uh, I think, slides or uh, stairs, whatever, yeah. And uh, we can see uh, our info important point is the following, yeah. We have the business processes, like the design to operate and so on, and and, and different solution areas. And uh, as we are talking here from integration, yeah, it's really important, yeah, to build integrated solution, yeah, to build up an end-to-end -end process, and therefore we have introduced yeah, the sweet qualities, yeah, which you can see here, seven sweet qualities, and all of these sweet qualities are running on BTP. And also the today topic, the one workflow inbox, as outlined, is also one sweet quality which runs on BTP. And this is really our, our platform to deliver the uh, new functionality and to enrich all the functionality for your sweet applications for sure. That's the idea behind our sweet qualities and we are shipping more and more. And one important aspect as well here is to see if we are talking about sweet qualities, a lot of these sweet qualities are belongs to others yeah, in, in regards to the task center and workflow inbox on the right side maybe. Yeah. 
you will see that some of the topics which are outlined here in the blue boxes are also part of the requirement for the sweep quality. Yeah? That means, for example, if we want to log on or to build up a single sign on to other single sign on to other solutions, we need a consistent security identity management. Yeah? We have an UI for sure yeah, to handle the task. We see this later in the, in the setup process. Yeah? That will have also the sweet quality seamless uh, user experience touched. And uh, the definition of a task uh, is also defined in the, in the ODM on the line domain models, which we can also have a look on. Yeah? And therefore, this is also another sweet quality which will be part or is touched by uh, the one workflow involved. What we see in action also here is the coordinate lifecycle management. So we are will be setting up a sub task center with a PTP booster from one point, and that's also a part of the sweet quality coordinate lifecycle management. Yeah? And in the future, we will also see in a lot of our processes like uh, need to cash or source to pay also the integration of subtask centers, our de facto yeah, inbox, especially if it comes to multiple LOB systems. Yeah? But we see this yeah, in, the, in the architecture later. Yeah? And to get some more information, I think we released this, I think yesterday for two days ago, the new integration or the update of the integration strategy paper so please check it, yeah, because here are also some key inter or key points really interesting, also in regards to the BTP and our overall integration strategy, which means also yeah, the subtask center and the sweet qualities, which are uh, I talked about. And yeah, let's let's go a little bit more. Yeah? I think the idea about subtask center should be maybe for some of you clear. The idea is basically yeah, to build up one solution on BTP, one central inbox. Uh, for our LOB solutions or sub solutions. Uh, that means that we are collecting the task in the on the BTP in the task center service and can then provide yeah, one unified UI to the end user where we can handle the task or we will see this all in the demo later on. Yeah, also has the capability here to jump directly in the target system because uh, the tasks itself are still, in, still available on the LOB solution like in success vectors or Comcure. Yeah? But we want to collect uh, in a single inbox, yeah, then the tasks, and this will be then our, our solutions of tasks. That, that's the idea behind it. Huh? And if you have maybe a look on the architecture, really straightforward, I think it's clear it's running on BTP. I mentioned this often today. And yeah, we have some dependency and dependent services, uh, which we see all in the setup process. Those so subtask center service will be integrated via sub launchpad service. Yeah? Therefore, we need to have sub launchpad service available and need to integrate on the sub task center apps in, in sub launchpad. And one another requirement which needs to be fulfilled is I, the, the usage of sub cloud identity service, yeah? especially for the authentication, first of all, on the BTP side of the house, but also to identify the user in the connected LOB solutions. It's important that we can identify the user. He who who owns the task so basically yeah. and what you also see here is the currently status of the uh, of the supported solutions yeah so therefore we providing a, a s for hana on planners can be connected with sub task center service via cloud connector and we are providing this currently a scope for s for hana cloud and field class and success factors yeah? that is currently available and can be a uh, Set up yeah, with, with subtask set. Yeah? And we see this later one also for sub success factors. We have provided one discovery set of mission, yeah, which you can also do after the initial setup, which we are doing now in a few seconds. Yeah? So now it's demo time. So we will do a little bit hands on. Yeah? As outlined, yeah, we have here discovery center mission. I think hopefully all of you know what it is. Yeah? We have here missions available services and also. So I have information what cost me or what is the price for a certain uh, use case. And if we have a look, for example, for the task center, yeah, we will see then also here the mission. Uh, the session is not required, it expired, but let's wait a second. And we can now see here that we have here the, the submission which we are calling today is establish a green box with the task center. Yeah? And you can see here as well, as outlined in the architecture some minutes ago, all of the services which are required. Yeah? So we are running on the Zaptas Center service. And if you're 
looking inside the task center server itself, you are getting also some additional information in regards to the pricing yeah, and which models are uh, required to set up sub task center. It's currently still missing the free tier option because sub task center is also available with free tier. Yeah, and you have also here the idea of the red mission available and all the other information. So, yeah. but maybe back to the to the mission yeah and the mission is you normally are really straightforward structured so we have a pro project board available we have additional resources linked directly in the mission and also as many as i've seen before or shown before the related missions are also available yeah? and if we go now on the project board because that's an interesting part of missions uh, to to set up such a kind of uh, use case you can see we have uh, defined or i've defined different uh, journal discover boards yeah where we can maybe let's start sort of the mission now yeah, where we get some basic informations about what is subtask center what is integration strategy yeah who or where can i find so the documentation is here described in the boards and then we getting fully in the in the doing phase yeah, where we say okay let's prepare your btp cockpit yeah, and that will be done now i think in two minutes or so on there yeah, and also the setup process is is described in the different cards. Yeah? And if you take it, for example, the, the commercial prerequisites, as mentioned before, we see here, okay, we can use our task center with three tier, with CBA or also a subscription variant. And yeah, okay, check marks this to, to complete this. And now we can really get started, for example, to set up account or to do this manually, yeah, to, to create a new sub account, which we will do, I think, in a short time. And and that's the idea behind it. Yeah? And to set up Subtar Center, it's I think quite simple. Yeah, what we need to do, and this all they are described here, is first of all to create a sub account. Yeah. So if you're familiar with sub BTP, I think we need to open our global account and do not have an issue with the session again. And here <clears throat> we see now some accounts and just creating a new one to have a real practical demo here to say for example the garage yeah? and we want to run this setup maybe in frankfurt it's near located to me and therefore we're creating shortly yeah, this sub account and in the next step if we go maybe back in the mission we can see okay create sub account is this done yeah? we need now to define the BTP services which are required and prerequisite for sub task center setup as, as mentioned before yeah it's, it's basically the launchpad service and the cloud identity service and also the sub task center service itself yeah and this will be now handled wait a second okay account is available we have now the option now to to, to add the entitlements to the sub account that means we check if task center and launchpad service is available and if you have a little more detailed view on it we see launchpad is not available and South task center as well so let's check to configure the entitlements and that's the, the required service plans yeah i think it's better procedure for on ptp yeah to say okay we need some task center for sure and we need the required dependency launchpad service to run the applications inside inside the task center yeah and we're adding simply the to service plan and clicking on save button that's the first requirement which we have yeah? the second one was as, as already mentioned the cloud identity service yeah? that means we need to authenticate or authenticate later our user against cloud identity service or the ies short yeah therefore we need to build the trust from the sub account against the EIS tenant, yeah, and as some of you know as well, yeah, I think this will be done here in the established trust or in the trust configuration. And by clicking simply the button, we are able to can establish trust to IES tenants which are available or bind to the global account or to the CIM ID for an end customer. In my case, we will see now a list of different EIS tenants, hopefully, yeah, which we can choose here. Yeah. For example, we're using some, this one, yeah, and now we can automatically create the trust relationship between our sub BTP sub account and the ES tenant. In the past, this was be handled via exporting 
SAML XML files and importing it, yeah, but now we have OpenID Connect available for new EIS tenants, and therefore we can make use of the automatic trust binding by simply pressing the button and selecting EIS tenants. No? I think that's quite, quite nice and simplify also here no? again the setup process yeah, for trust setup. Okay, that's that's all what we need. And now, as as also outlined, yeah, if you go now back again and say, okay, we added the now we can use we see this later on also the new or BTP CLI. If you want to have more of the terminal feeling or more on developer, you can also do all the steps the, like entitlement setup and creation of sub accounts. Also via common line we are BTP CLI. We see this later on in another kind of setup scenario. But now it's time, yeah. I think automatic trust setup is all also happening, yeah. So we can also mark this as complete. And now it's time uh, really to run the automatic provisioning of subtask center, yeah, to set up subtask center. That means in short, yeah, I think to create service instances, define the role collections, and define some other attributes, destinations, for example, which we need to connect later on to different LOBs and also to provide, for example, the application for subtask center. Yeah. And to do this, I think it's also now magic, uh, go to the global account area, then we choose the booster area, and we can now have a look on the task center booster. Yeah, and we should follow them, and we can simply execute the booster and see, okay, the prerequisites are, are met. Yeah? That means the services are available, and we have the, the trust relationship. And now it's the time to say, okay, which sub-account should be used? So we using this one, which we are currently also created manually. And now we are able to go to the last step to review again, and then we can finish the setup process. And what you now see is that uh, some steps will be done automatically. Yeah? That means cloud will be enabled, destination creation, role collection will be de defined, and so on, and so on. And maybe to not, not lose time here, we can have maybe also look on on the task center, how it looks like if it's finished set up also with a connection to LOBs, because this discovery center mission is outlined as you're only the part of the BTP. That means we are not connecting here any kind of uh, LOB solutions like a reward or success factors. So let's have a look shortly how it looks like in the real world example. So maybe make a new window, for example. Now. And we can here have a look how the task center normally or the final state will look like if you have connect multiple systems, yeah, only to get the first idea behind the task center. Yeah? And that's simply the task center. I think we've seen this also before in the presentation. Yeah? So we are having here, for example, different LOB connected. Yeah? We have all the filter options available. You can see them, the number of tasks and can, uh, can sort and filter, I think, the normal behavior if you want to have a list uh, in the the framework on the of sub priori app available. And what is also quite nice, uh, I guess, and it's based on the fact that we are using cloud identity service is the capability that we can have, for example, if we want to check maybe the success factor stuff yeah, and have here, for example, a leaf request. We have also the ability to get some task details. I think that's already not a magic. Yeah? I think that there are some, some information is available, but we are able simply to jump via Singles on on also in the target system or in the task provider, maybe name it like this, and see also here that the task is still uh, existent yeah, on the on the connected system. Now it took a while, although yeah, it depends on my session currently. Yeah, but you will we see that we are really jumping directly in the in the task of the connected LOB system. Yeah? And can also handle here, I think, the approval or the etc. And then we we'll see later on that this task will be done. Uh, done no? But let's do this here, maybe. Yeah? And then we can simply go uh, to the approve state and say, okay. And afterwards, we should now see now after some seconds here that the count should be decreased. Uh, let me refresh now and then now uh, maybe it took a while uh, that we see that later on that we have only 19 tasks. Uh, uh, let's wait, give them a chance to wait. 
Yeah, maybe in the meanwhile, also another nice cool feature, I guess, yeah, also for the mobile part of sub task center, we are providing here also uh, the integration with, with uh, sub mobile start, if you may. However, we are now 219 and then 20. Oh, now it's working, yeah. Okay, we have now two, one task less, and there we have 19 tasks available, so it's working fine, yeah. Another uh, maybe one one additional thing, yeah. Maybe also integration with S4 is important, yeah. So a lot of customers, so I know it also from my past roles as architect and consultant, yeah, has also custom development, especially in the S4 context and S4 context. So we providing now also the integration of the local S4 my inbox in the task center, yeah, and therefore we are, can realize also custom coding, yeah, on S4 especially here in, in task center. Yeah? So we see later one uh, that also here, the complete my inbox informations are will be rendered. Hopefully it took not too long. And then we have also the capability, uh, maybe give them some seconds uh, that we get here, yeah, right. I think if you're knowledgeable about the S4 inbox, that's really the few on, uh, on the, yeah. On the S4 side, yeah. If you're also jumping directly inside, so S4, you have the same view, yeah. So you get here all informations and also additional uh, fields, yeah, than we have seen before. Yeah. But uh, anyway, back to the mobile point, yeah. Um, with Launchpad service, we are able to integrate also a uh, mobile start, if you may be now, yeah. So here we have now all the integrations with sub task center available out of the box, yeah. That means if you have, for example, enabled the mobile start in, uh, application in the Launchpad service on BTP, you can simply install the app or register your app if you have still uh, already installed it. And this looks then, I've shared my, my mobile device for this. Yeah, you can see that this looks like this. Yeah? So here's my mobile device, really connected, yeah. And you have now here all this integration with sub mobile start. And uh, I'll close this one, it's a profile. You see here, first of all, we'll go here to the to the app section. Yeah, That means it's really all informations which are available in the back in the Launchpad service. So you know, we maybe go back to see this. Yeah, Here are all other applications available in the Launchpad and this is directly this view, which we have currently now here in the sub start view yeah? to get here an overview of my applications and joy tiles from on-premise system or also from LOB systems like success factors. But nevertheless, we have also here the possibility yeah, to integrate real here yeah, with sub task center. So open your task, you can see we have here all this integration yeah, with sub task center and also we have now the count of 19, which we've seen before also on the web client. Yeah. So we have here, I think, really tight and easy integration yeah, to, for example, handle tasks all on the mobile. Yeah. You can see all some history data and can approve or deny tasks yeah, simply in the same way, I think, like in the web client. Yeah. Okay, that's the idea behind mobile start and also an idea how it looks like if you have connected multiple applications. Yeah. You have also the capability in the task center, yeah, because see, this is also, decreased now yeah, to 18 tasks as we have proved this with mobile start we have also the capability or uh, to see here also an administration app for the task center and here you get really this information for example from our admin perspective yeah which systems are connected and is all running and so on yeah this is also provided by the sub task center service on gp yeah. okay back to our Set that process. Okay, great. We have an issue. Yeah, let's let's do it again, maybe. And that was not planned. So for that, but maybe we can also continue with the other setup progress. Okay, that's not so nice. It was working in the morning, but nevertheless, let's do this maybe in this way. Let me starting this again. I'm checking if this then will be working. And if not, we can also discuss another topic. Yeah. If I've outlined yeah in the, in the presentation, and maybe you have a look on the presentation again. Meanwhile, the booster is running. We are providing an also another way how we can set up, for example, the task center. Yeah? So we have here a, a repository available, a GitHub repository that's public available to set up different use cases uh, with the BTP setup automator. Yeah? 
and we are able then execute all the setup procedures based on the BTP CLI or the common line interface for Cloud Foundry directly uh, on a Docker image. Yeah? And this is here currently also available. Yeah? And you can do this also live and hopefully this will have no issue currently. Yeah? You can see, uh, I think here the idea behind it, or wait a second, this one, yeah? that we are putting different uh, tools inside a Docker com uh, image. Yeah? And then we can execute a, a certain or different use case config files, which contains yeah, one uh, use case in our uh, situation, it could be uh, for the task center use case. And I will show you this as well. And maybe in the meanwhile, we can have a look on this one. Uh, it's still working. Ah, it looks quite good. So we have now, first of all, execute the booster setup. Let's, let's go ahead with this. And then we go over to the BTP setup automator. Well, I think we have also on a time perspective, a tough buffer, and therefore it's all fine. Okay, that's working now. So normally, as you know, uh, we're going back to our sub account, the sub garage sub account. Here should be now also our sub task center service available. So we see here, for example, three instances. And if you have a look on it, uh, we see here is the Launchpad service now available as a subscription, and all of the task center service is uh, activated or the service instance is instantiated by the booster, which we had executed before. Yeah? And what we need now to, to, to access maybe our, the, the, that task center service on Launchpad service is now to, to do some configurations also on the Cloud Identity service. Yeah? That means we need to define for sure one guy who can administrate the Launchpad service to, to include, for example, yeah, the, the task center applications. Yeah? And to simply do this, it's really a straightforward approach as well. I think we can have a look on the Launchpad admin role and we can define here, for example, on our custom EIS tenant here, a group yeah? and all users on the EIS uh, uh, tenant, which we are assigning to this group will automatically have access then to the admin area of the Launchpad service on BTP. Yeah? And therefore let's go in this way that we define here a group that's called SubGarage again. Yeah? Let's copy the name for we use it. Uh, and now we are switching over to the EIS tenant. I think it's also uh, really clear what, what's happening here. You have here some uh, activities in regards to the user authorization management. You see also application resources. And if you maybe shortly check the applications, we see now here as well our uh, created application based on the fact that we are building the trust between the sub account and our. EIS tenant. Yeah? And here we can define here some additional parameters and different assertion attributes and so on. I think that's the scope of the mission. Yeah? But uh, we want yeah, uh, to get uh, task up and running. Yeah? And therefore, let's go to the user authorization area, as mentioned, and create one user who will act as an admin user to administrate the BTP launch. Yeah? That maybe let's call him also that. Garage, maybe, yeah, not a good name, but nevertheless, yeah, take it in this way. And, oops, sorry, maybe my video system at, sorry, example.com. Yeah, and we say, okay, this will be search as a name. And now we can set the status of actor, trust in the case because the user has mail which is not really existent yeah? and then we're not sending um, any kind of mail out so we also defining that the email is verified normally and yes we want to do this by the user but here for the demo purpose yeah? that makes sense to do here some uh, modifications yeah and what we need finally is also to define password detail yeah so we want to set here an initial password that the user can log on uh, hopefully this is correct what I've typed. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, so here we are ready. And the next step is how to create here um, the group, which we also have defined in the Launchpad admin role, if you remember. Yeah, so this rule role now, a role or group, which we have defined here will now be created on the S side. Yeah? That means we're creating here a new group called the garage and again the garage and now find our new launchpad admin user to this full group 
can say, okay, our also coverage user should be part of this group. And that's basically all on the ES configuration to setting up task center to execute the launchpad admin. Yeah? Uh, right. And to do so, I will also create a new incognito window based on some uh, issues with sessions. So we are executing again the BTP cockpit with my user. That's first of all fine. And now we are able to probably jump in the launchpad admin area. So again, we are going into the sub account, sub garage, selecting here the instances and subscriptions area and jumping now in the admin area of sub task center. And here we want to use now and not the default IDP. We want to use now the new custom ERS, which we have used before also to create the user. Therefore, not using the certificate, we are now using here our sub garage user with our initial password. And we are logging in. And now we can define a new one. Oops, that's not correct. So, this is correct. And now we are inside the site manager of Launchpad service, also maybe known. But of some of you, hopefully it's loading, yeah, it's here. And what we need now is also quite simple. We need to, yeah, first of all, to check the provider manager because the application which are provided by Task Center and the, are in the HTML5 repository. Therefore, let's resync the HTML5 repository in the launch pad, so it's done. And now we should see in the content manager, the new, application. It took a while here. And if you go now in the HTML5 area, we see ah, cook. here you are, task center app and task center admin app is available. Let's do an access to my content. Yeah? And to have here a short demo how it works now, let's create first of all, I think that's the only element which we need a, a group. Uh, let's, let's name identical. And we can now add here, right, the apps to the group, save it. And we will do the same for the everyone role. So to keep it simple, yeah, sure. Normally we should create whatever a task center group or task center admin group, but to have it in a simple way, we can now also do this first of all to the everyone group to see if it's working also with the user, which we are using currently, yeah, that the admin has directly access to the site and to see the tiles are available. Yeah? And if we now creating, for example, the site, let's call it identical, the garage, and go into the site. Okay, we can here also define some properties, for example, also the mobile start capability, which will be provided by the Launchpad service can enter and also some other uh, <coughs> features, but that's not the part of the mission today. We can now simply execute or open the site and we should now see our two apps, which we have included in the, in the Launchpad yeah? and here we are. Uh, that is uh, poorly a uh, poor launch pad, yeah? no connection to any kind of Adobe solution. Yeah? But uh, the basic setup now is finished. Yeah? That means we see over here the sub UR5 framework yeah? and also the list view of sub task center. But yeah, as mentioned, without any kind of, of connected Adobe, yeah? it's really empty. Yeah? But this is then part, yeah? if you go back to the, our Discovery Center mission, yeah? that we can mark this complete. This was the last step which we have done. Yeah? And the BTP setup automatically will be part of the last one. Yeah? But we have now uh, integrated sub launch pad, uh, sub task center with sub launch pad service. Yeah? And the last step normally, if you're talking about sub launch pad or uh, sub task center is now to integrate different other solutions. Yeah? Therefore, we can have a look on the on the different sub help documents which are providing here to connecting the support scenarios like success vectors or S4 HANA. Or you can simply also check the related missions. So we have here, as mentioned before, all the mission available, how we can connect success vectors. It's also not a complicated, yeah, all the state forward yeah, to integrate and then sub success vectors, yeah. Also here, requirement for sure is that the cloud identity service must be connected to success vectors. Yeah? It's part of another session, maybe. Yeah, but as mentioned and started before, yeah, it's, let's, let's have a look. Also, this this is special yeah, to set up use cases, for example, on BTP. Also here for the task center, as an example. Yeah, so 
as mentioned, yeah, we can do this with the B2B setup automator. Yeah? And if you have a look on the global public GitHub repository from a colleague here, this is idea and as I outlined before is yeah, right to put tools in the Docker container yeah, and to make use of them in, 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 yeah, in a Docker container. Yeah? And it's, it's also a quite nice uh, procedure, I guess, also to build up some PLCs or all the use cases and all the productive developments maybe, yeah, because you can uh, define the use case by yourself. Yeah? And if you go maybe in the use case folder here, you can see here also the definition of a use case. It's, it's quite simple. Here's a task center use case, which I've created. Yeah? So there is some, some parameters available. Yeah, okay, how it looks, how it's made. Yeah? There's also the JSON for the definition of the use case. Yeah? And you can see here, here's all defined, yeah? for example, which instances which you want to need here. Yeah? For example, one box service is required and as well as explained before, launch launch pad service. Yeah? And that's all. And to execute this, this, this use case is also quite simpler. So what we need to do is for sure to have a terminal available and then we can simply execute this command. Huh? So maybe open one of them, uh, you have terminal available. And if I execute now this command, this should be in our work. And the next step is now to define here some properties. Huh? Means here, for example, we want to have here the, the subdomain available and also the global account and the name of the administrator who have access to the global account. Yeah. I prepared this currently also. Let's go again here. And if you prepare this, so you can see I define here the data center US 10 and also the, the, the subdomain of the global uh, global account. And then I are uh, providing only my uh, my email address. And afterwards, the process will be started. I need to oh, no, it's a typo. Sorry for this. Maybe again, not a magic. And this should be working now. So this should be the right password. And now. Hopefully it's going, yeah. And now you can see, yeah, I think also really in interesting yeah, how to use a uh, PTP CI, for example. You can see really what is happening in the background if you want to use, for example, PTP CLI uh, in the Docker container or maybe all the wire shell yeah, directly to, to execute certain steps on the PTP. And uh, here in our case, yeah, sure, it will be created, for example, a sub account. Let's call it sub discovery center. Yeah. And if you are now looking maybe on our global account area on the BTP, we should now also identify a new sub account called Discovery Center Mission. Uh, that was now executed during the Docker container via BTP CLI to create a, a sub account. Uh, and if you are looking back to the command line interface shortly, uh, we see it now additional steps will be done. Uh, in this case, the, the highlighted in green, for example, recreating here the Cloud Foundry environment. Yeah? And if you're now going into instances and subscription area here again, we should now see that the Cloud Foundry environment is created, yeah? also executed via BTP CLI. Now, the next step is to, uh, yeah, you see it here, the registration or subscription of the Launchpad service. Yeah? And again, if we are jumping back here, we should now see that the Launchpad service is or will be now subscribed in the background. Yeah, it's currently in processing. And afterwards, I think the last one, two instances which are now created is one of them is the XSUAA yeah, for the authentication, which we need later on also to build up the trust with the ERS tenant and the one inbox service yeah, to execute or to yeah, have top task center apps available and so on. Yeah? And if you now jumping back, we should now see that here again, refresh the page shortly, that we have now some task center mostly finished and then available. Yeah? The last step is now to create a service key in the task center. Maybe we can have a look how long it took. So I think that's all the seconds and the last step which will then 
be executed is also the autom autom semi-automatic or trust relationship to a uh, sub account to an ES tenant. Yeah, so you can see later. Or wait a second. We will see this in some seconds that we are now getting hopefully this up and running of instances. And let's wait in two seconds. Okay, all green, it looks good. Yeah, we have all services available. And what is missing now, yeah, for sure, if you're checking here on the Launchpad side, okay, the trust is currently not established with our custom EAS tenant. But let's see, I think the API will now here executed and also in some, some seconds yeah so currently some role collections will be created and assigned to my user yeah so we see this here also that the role collections also programmatically will be generated here via our setup in the use case file and here the launchpad admin for example and so on therefore we can here do also the same stuff which we do before in the in the pgp booster based mission but uh, let's have also only look here how the set of automator work here but yeah it's now finished and what is now happening is it's really the last step uh, is now to find the, the trust relationship uh, also via btp cli or with rest apis uh, and by defining here the use case file uh, so you can see now we have also here the ability uh, to to choose different es tenants as before on the ui and we can also here establish the trust now to the same EIS tenant as before. And after a few seconds, we should now also see here again that the trust is established to the same EIS. Now, also with the BTP setup automator, hopefully. Let's wait a second. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, so successfully executed our use case via BTP setup automator and here we go. We have now also established the trust. Yeah? And now we can completely proceed with the last or uh, the demo before the defining the user on ES tenant, defining the group, assigning, uh, executing then the Launchpad service, administrate the Launchpad apps and include task center and execute the site. Yeah? But I think we have done this before. It's not necessary required to repeat this again maybe go back to the presentation for a few slides and also to have uh, uh, maybe one slide the last slide which i have but i want to also discuss another topic afterwards yeah right here also yeah i think the idea behind subtasks and there should be clear yeah an inbox for different kind of tasks from sap solution is currently the focus especially currently as for hana cloud and on premise success factors field class are supported and if you are now coming to maybe some seconds or two questions, let's have a look on the on the roadmap. Yeah. Here is also the current status of the planning. Yeah, for sure there are we are missing still some solutions. Yeah, we will be providing, for example, all this integration for sure. Yeah, that we have an integration, we will be integration uh, have as concure and also Ariba that will be shipped in the next months. And often comes also the, as the question regarding third party, also the integration of third party will be offered. I think end of the year, beginning of the year, currently not clear when we can deliver this, yeah, but it will be provided. And with that, and maybe with the last uh, topic, which I have on my side is now to show you here also the, the task and the community, which we have recently used or uh, launched. Yeah? So we have here all the uh, page on the community you can see tomorrow's all the additional session together with Uta in regards also to, from PM for the task center product management from the task center. And I will also do mostly the same demo as before. But uh, yeah, if you're interested for the forward this, yeah, you can have a look on this and yeah, some some informations also. Yeah, the discovery center missions as mentioned before, and also yeah, some some other blocks which are, are available. Yeah. So please have a look, maybe contribute as well. So, that the uh, community will work. And with that, I would say, yeah, okay, thank you. And let's okay. have some questions. Yeah, thank you so much, Fabian. So the, I see there's a, a number of questions. I think uh, Andreas has been in trying to answer some of these. Um, so one is from one of our SAP colleagues. Uh, what is, uh, let me just see what happened here. 
Um, what is the main difference between my inbox and SAP Task Center? Yeah, okay, the basic idea is, yeah, sure, we have seen this here, maybe I'll share shortly the screen and the picture also about it, yeah, um, wait a second, share shortly, as yeah, the basic idea is, yeah, my inbox is currently yeah, working, for example, on the S4 side, yeah, if you are talking on the S4 inbox, they are only on S4, yeah, therefore we have here local inbox, the same one is here all on, uh, maybe it's targeting more of the, the workflow management inbox, sure, this is running also on BTP, additional is a task center, but it's currently covering only the workflow management. And in the future, it will be become that the task center is the central inbox also of the BTP side. Yeah? If you have the feature parity, for example, for this, then also the integration yeah, with workflow management will be done via the task center and also the capability for sure also to integrate other LOB solution. And this is currently yeah, not supported by workflow management per default. Yeah? And that's a different, which we have here. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And it's our task and also the task center, for example, is free of charge. It's a kernel server, a service which we provided for cloud LO, for cloud customers for free. Therefore, this is a go-to application if you want to integrate multiple uh, SAP solutions in one central inbox. Yeah, It makes no sense, yeah, sure. If you have only one LOB solution, then okay, I can discuss if it makes sense to use that task center. Yeah? But if you have two, for example, then it's really an, an positive effect to use some tasks and I would say. Okay, thanks, thanks for that. So uh, there's another one from Dan. Um, his, his comment is task center is very nice. Reminds me for ERP inbox, the prerequisite is S for HANA. Um, it will not work, uh, it will not work for ECC6. Can you comment on that? Yeah, right. Uh, this is currently also in a discussion point and we got the feedback also for a lot of customers. Yeah, uh, this is also, uh, uh, collected and will be discussed maybe or I cannot uh, ensure that it will become but it's currently also highly discussed and maybe we have also support somewhere in in regards to the uh, ECC support but nevertheless there's also a sub note available where you can really see which support versions are available also from the S4 side of, uh, of the house here yeah, because not all of the old S4 releases are also not supported but there is note uh, available on on this yeah, to get the details here. So next one is from Ronnie. Uh, can you integrate the My Inbox from S4 HANA and also the My Inbox from the MDG system, as well as the PLM engineering inbox? Okay. Well, there's a question uh, also based on the release. Yeah? If, for example, S4 inbox, we have seen this before, it's, it's possible, yeah? so we can integrate S4. Sure, that is, is no problem on, on this side. Yeah. Now it's a question how it looks like on the MDG side, for example, is uh, MDG based on the S4 on the right release? Yeah, and maybe then, yeah, or maybe not. Then this is also possible to integrate, yeah, sure, the MDG, but in detail, we need to check this. Yeah, uh, we switch out maybe also afterwards and we can discuss this in detail. Yeah, but yeah, well, the S4 inbox is supported. And if in the case that MDG is running on the S4 stack, for example, yeah, I'm not the MDG expert therefore, yeah, then this should be uh, possible. Yeah. Okay. So Ronnie will be sharing uh, Fabian's uh, contact information if you want to reach out to him after this uh, call. Um, the next one is from Michelle. Is there a possibility to add also an SF, SF tasks example from talent development or performance and filter as an admin, uh, which kind of tasks should go into the task center? And I, there's a couple of questions here. There might my... yeah, I've told <laughs> our still got capability. Let's let's see if it's this really or will be other. I think that will be possible in the future. I think that we have different kind of of tasks, for example, for the task center in regards to uh, success factors. This is the case. Yeah, so we have also provided here, for example support solution and use case you can see for example especially for success vectors i'm also here not the expert yeah that we are providing this uh, support for this kind of task and this will be if something is missing i guess we will support more and more yeah but also it's a discussion point and the roadmap topic yeah so let's check the roadmap first and if not then we can also have a, a chat about this yeah what is missing yeah and mm -hmm. then we can uh, take this also as a development back end, like backlog maybe Okay, then I think you may have answered this other one. Will ECC be in a future roadmap of task center? Yeah, right. It's a discussion topic. Yeah, we know the, the demand on the customer side here. Yeah, and uh, 
maybe uh, also uh, let's check this and afterwards maybe i can provide all the sub notes what is the okay. current status and which is maybe in future possible uh, i can share this maybe also with the presentation afterwards a bit more okay. details on this uh. and then from manuel um, are there any plans to connect it to workflow management service or process automation my inbox apps yeah, sure. on FTP as yeah. well they are also shown here in the roadmap. Yeah, although it is really the case. Yeah, although in the midterm or long term, that the subtask center application will be this the or inbox on TP. Yeah? That means, uh, I think the first time the workflow management will have also its own inbox and task center in parallel. But in the midterm, workflow management will also then only provide task into task center and also as a spa. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Therefore, if you have a, a long time this uh, vision of a strategy, I think you should consider the task center as a central inbox yeah, for scenarios. Okay. Then a uh, next question from Harish: Is it possible to add CF workflow to inbox uh, to task center? A CF workflow? What? What? What is? Although, if it's talking about the workflow management on BTP, then yes, clearly yes. And before we are latest delivering yeah, the integration with workflow management on BTP. Yeah? Okay. So Harish, if if that's not the the answer to your question, just just uh, clarify it in the, in the chat. Um, Sabiranath, uh, for his question, will uh, we be able to integrate a custom workflow to the task center? If so, do we have any restrictions or limitations to consider? Yeah, the custom workflows now we are depending what is a custom workflow. Yeah, it's a custom workflow from S4, for example, then uh, this will be integrated via we are using directly the integration with S4 my inbox. If it's an external workflow system like um, as a non SAP system, then we need to rate yeah, if you are providing the uh, third party integration, and then yeah, we will be deliver an API how you can integrate then with third party with uh, Zoptas Center. Sure. Okay. Uh, the next one is from Guy. Is it possible to by default go to custom IAS rather than the first, having the page with the two IDPs and having to choose for IAS? Okay, it's a more cloud identity or a sub account question. I think it's currently also a discussion point. I'm not so deep inside. Yeah, currently it's 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 a case that normally you get the default IDP with your S user if you have a BTP global account. Maybe in the midterm, long term, we are also changing this that you're getting your own ERS per default. Yeah, that you are then using, for example, also a custom user store to authenticate. But please, for this topic as well. Please reach to me out and we have maybe in short think about it and I can invite additional experts to discuss this in, in detail. Yeah. Our next one's from Costas. Uh, what about Ariba tasks? Can they be integrated as well into the inbox? Yeah, we have that, yeah. I've seen this all before, yeah. So here's Ariba and currently not of the current status of the task center, but if you're checking again the roadmap, yeah, we can see the task center integration with Ariba sourcing and procurement, drive buying, Will be delivered in Q3. Uh, therefore, yes, mm -hmm. it's okay. possible. The next one is from Ganesh. Uh, to use the setup automator, should we first install Docker on our laptop? Yeah, sure. Also, if you want to run the desktop automator, yeah, or you need to have the prerequisites. It's also described here in the in the, in the GitHub repository, which I can share as well. Yeah, so Docker needs to be installed locally. Yeah, then you can execute the the, the, the image. Yeah? But you have all the other options, for example, you see uh, all those scripting. Yeah? There are all the different options explained here. And there's also a block out in the Zap community to get some more details here. Yeah? Okay. And then one from um, Abul. Uh, does Task Center provide substitute functionality like SAP workflow management? Yeah, uh, this is also a roadmap topic, but yes, although we are working also on the also capability that we are providing substitution management. I'm not sure if this is still here uh, defined, but yes, uh, we are also well providing this maybe end of the year that we have also substitution management available for the task center. Okay. And another one from uh, Costas, how does task center fit to the SAP Fury app strategy? Yeah, it's a BTP or service running on ZAP UI5, the same like Fiori. Yeah? And the, the general strategies here also, if you are, for example, providing a central inbox, a central uh, launch pad, yeah? you can yeah, integrate also S4 applications directly here with exposure of CDM content in one launch pad. And this makes sense if you are having hybrid or cloud focused or 
a UI strategy, yeah, then you can have it. Yeah, but Fiori is here mostly from the S4 side, but it's yeah, only based on the UI5. Yeah, therefore so it's only a uh, technology behind it. Okay. And another one from uh, Nidhi Deep. Uh, will my inbox with Task Center be available on SAP Work Zone service? That's also a enrollment topic. Also, midterms this will be also come that we are providing integration with WorkZone. Yeah, sure, because Launchpad service and works, uh, yeah, also WorkZone is yeah, also based technical of Launchpad service yeah, with some enhancements, especially. But we are working also on this to integrate WorkZone with Subtask Center. Yeah? That will be also uh, available okay. in the future. Then another one from one of our SAP colleagues. Uh, should all LOBs need to integrate? to IAS for integrating to task center? Yeah, IAS for authentication is for sure required for the task center service on BTP. That is a requirement and also to, to provide, also maybe the SAP caller can reach out to me because that's uh, uh, maybe also another dis discussion which you need to uh, have. But yeah, we need for authentication also for the LAB solutions in EIS. Yeah? But it's possible for sure to use, for example, another user store like Azure AD or something like this. It is possible. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And we need to, to ensure the ID on the on the certain LOB solutions that we can identify the user who has a task. Yeah? And this must be unique. Yeah? But that's okay. a deep dive discussions. Maybe we can have this or, or also internal or maybe also another session. Mm -hmm. So I see that Harish has clarified his original question. So I think he added task center is task center available in trail account or trial account. Yeah, that's currently not the case. Yeah. Also CPA is, is outlined and also as mentioned, there are free tiers also available and subscription-based one, yeah. But trial now it's not available currently. Therefore, yeah, I mean, that is not the case currently. Yeah. Okay. So I think we've answered most of the questions in the chat. If there's any other questions uh, for Fabian, please do type your question in the chat or unmute your line and ask your, your question directly to Fabian. We still have about two or three minutes before our session ends. Any other questions for Fabian? Yeah, okay. maybe can I outline in the meantime if nothing is here. For example, as I mentioned initially, yeah, in the regards to the integration strategy, you can see directly if you are a little bit knowledge about this that we have here, for example, I've, I've outlined the ODM because we have two minutes left. Uh, maybe you are using this. Here you can see, for example, also the task data type definition is available. In this case, via API or business hub in the ODM task explorer. Yeah? So you can see we have also here another suite quality, again, which is touched by the task center. That's also maybe interesting for some of you. Uh, that here is also the reference to other Speed quality, which, which I've outlined, I think, in the beginning of the session, you know, to get the understanding you know, why we do this you know, and what is our strategy behind this. Yeah, and please read. Yeah, as mentioned, yeah, have a look on this integration strategy paper and the new one as well you know, to get an idea of what is behind this, how we want to deliver this, and what we have still also delivered a lot of APIs and integration aspects you know, to get. Okay. Details it looks about like this. another one, a question came in from Ganesh: Is there a plan to integrate Task Center with WorkZone? Yeah, I think this was a discussion before. Yeah, why uh, we are we discussing this? Uh, will be available in the future because yeah, Workzone is also another offering which we have, so an enhanced offering of Launchpad service maybe. Yeah, and there will be an integration in the future. I cannot say which quarter, yeah, but I think maybe end of the year we can deliver all of this integration aspect. Huh? Okay, I think we've exhausted all the questions, and I think we're at the top of the hour. Thank you so much, Fabian, for a great uh, interactive session and great uh, a lot of great information here. We hope that uh, Fabian's answered um, all your questions and maybe even um, created some new ones in your mind. So um, I will be sending out um, Fabian's contact information if you wanted to directly reach out to him um, and uh, as a, as a follow up. Thank you again, Fabian. So please. Yeah, you. Sure. So please join us again. Uh, our next session is will be held on June the 1st. Our next mission uh, will be automate the migration from SAP process integration to SAP cloud integration with our partner uh, FIGAF. Uh, they will be demonstrating that, uh, that mission for us on June the 1st. So again, join us uh, then for, for that session. I wanna thank you all again for taking time out of your busy schedules to, to join us. Have a great morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you're located. Thank you so much, guys.